Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is trade and comparative advantage. So the last lecture started our unit on trade and we looked at absolute advantage where California was really good at making wine and really bad at making tequila and Mexico was really good at making tequila and really bad at making wine and so the two states did what makes sense. They made the product that they're good at making and then traded to get the other product from the other guy. Now, in that case, the states had an absolute advantage. California had an absolute advantage in making wine. Mexico had an absolute advantage in making tequila. California was just better at making wine, and Mexico was just better at making tequila. But what if it's the case that California is better at making everything? Would California still want to trade with Mexico under their circumstances? Well, the answer is yes. And so the big question that we're going to be looking at in this video is essentially why. Why trade if you are better at making everything? Well, the answer lies in this idea of comparative advantage. So trade is trivially useful in the example that we just talked about between California and Mexico when no state has an absolute advantage in making every good. California had an absolute advantage in making wine. Mexico had an absolute advantage in making tequila. This was very complimentary, and so they just traded with each other because of that. But what if California, say, figured out a really good way of growing agave in the Californian deserts and could suddenly produce tequila better than Mexico could? Would California still want to produce or trade with Mexico under those circumstances? Again, the answer is yes, because of comparative advantage, and we'll see that when we start looking at production charts here. But the idea, the important idea here is that trade is still beneficial if we have differential opportunity costs for making goods. So an opportunity cost is simply what you have to forego or give up to take a particular action. So for example, your opportunity cost for watching this video is whatever you would have done had you not watched this video. Maybe that was, you know, go to the kitchen and make yourself a ham sandwich. If that's the case, then your opportunity cost for watching this video is that ham sandwich that you would have made otherwise. In the examples that we're going to be looking at, the opportunity costs are going to be not making a bottle of wine or not making a bottle of tequila. So let's take a look at the production charts. So this is the same production chart for, as before for making wine, where California, for a day's worth of labor, can make 10 bottles of wine, whereas in Mexico, a uh, Mexican can only make two bottles of wine for a day's labor. That's because California has this good Napa Valley region and Mexico doesn't have a very good climate for making grapes. Now, this is where we're switching things up. This is where we're pretending that California suddenly had a, f a magical way of making really good agave and could make a lot of tequila very easily as well. So in this case, we've now switched things up where now California can make 10 bottles of tequila for one day's worth of labor and Mexico can only make eight bottles. So if we just go back and forth here, we'll see that California is better than Mexico at making both products, right? 10 is more than two. A day's worth of labor in California produces more wine than in Mexico. And also a day's worth of labor in California now makes more tequila than Mexico can in a day's worth of labor. Now note that when California produces a bottle of wine, it is giving up one bottle of tequila. Right, Because a day's worth of labor produces 10 bottles of wine, it produces 10 bottles of tequila. It's the same amount. It's equally interchangeable. In contrast, when Mexico makes a bottle of wine, it can only make two bottles of wine a day per man. Right, And so if it makes a bottle of wine, it's essentially giving up four bottles of tequila. So that's a very hefty opportunity cost here where every bottle of wine that Mexico makes is giving up, it's losing four bottles of tequila. So you'll notice here that California is much better at making wine comparatively to Mexico, right? Because California is not giving up very much tequila to make wine, whereas Mexico is giving up a heck of a lot of tequila whenever it would want to make wine. So Mexico has a comparative advantage in making tequila. California has a comparative advantage in making wine. And because of this, we're going to see actually some benefits from trade. So let's just look at this world without any trade. So this is the consumption where California is going to make five bottles of wine and five bottles of tequila and consume both of those because there's no trade. And Mexico is going to make one bottle of wine and four bottles of tequila. If initially you thought that trade just isn't going to be beneficial, then you might be like California and here be start laughing and, and saying, hey, Mexico, we're better than you at everything. We don't need you anymore. Go away. Ha 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 ha. And Mexico, seeing this, would respond with just laughing it off and, and being like, okay, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And here's why. 
imagine we had production that looked like this. So we're now opening up the world for trade and California is going to make eight bottles of wine and two bottles of tequila and Mexico, because it has such a comparative advantage in making tequila, doesn't have to give up very many bottles of wine to make a bottle of tequila, is going to just specialize in making tequila purely. So Mexico is going to produce eight bottles of tequila. Mexico could say, hey, California, I'll trade you three bottles of tequila for two bottles of wine. If California were to look at that, it would scratch its head and think, oh, goodness, this is really awkward. This actually helps us out. We shouldn't have been so idiotic when we said, hey, we don't need you anymore. Fact of the matter is we're actually better off now if we com complete that trade. And here's why. Let's switch the numbers here and give three bottles of wine or rather three bottles of tequila from California or from Mexico to California and give two bottles of wine from California to Mexico. If we do that, then this is the consumption that we have now. And if we compare this to the world without trade, well, guess what? It's always better. So now with trade, we are better off all the way around. So California now is getting more wine and more tequila by commit completing this trade, and Mexico is getting more wine and more tequila as well. So the conclusion here is that trade is still good, even in a world where California is better than Mexico at producing everything. And again, the idea just goes back down to comparative advantage. Every bottle of wine California makes is one fewer bottle of tequila that it would make. And every bottle of wine from Mexico is four fewer bottles of tequila that it would make. So Mexico is paying a higher opportunity cost to make a bottle of wine. And so Mexico should specialize in what it is comparatively better at making, that is tequila. And that being the case, Mexico specializes in tequila. California still specializes in wine. And you get a nice little trade going on where both sides are making improvements. And so this just solidifies the fact that trade is really useful. It doesn't have to be the case that we're just better at making one thing and not very good at making another thing. It could be the case that we're just better at making everything. And even if that were so, we'd still want to trade. So trade is actually really, really attractive no matter how strong or how intelligent and how savvy you are at making things. You're still going to want to trade with other people and you're still going to reap benefits from trading with those people. So this is why trade is so prevalent in international relations and why it's so important. And now that we understand this, we're going to start talking about how we negotiate over trade and the sort of issues that can result uh, because of the trade. So that's the op opportunity cost argument, the comparative advantage, and the absolute advantage arguments. We've seen those, and now we'll transition into actually applying this into international relations. And we'll start doing that in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Take care.